Good morning. Uh, today we are having Dr. Constance Mutsitsi, a senior lecturer, a researcher in the Department of Public Administration and Management. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you so much. Uh, doctor, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Okay. Um, I always say curiosity because growing up I was a very curious child. And growing up in a township where service delivery is very bad, uh, we witnessed a lot of protests. It was, it, it literally became a culture. Whenever something is wrong, people would protest. And then I just had this curiosity, why are people protesting? What is the role of government in, in all of this? And my, my, my love or curiosity in that aspect grew. When I got to university, I then enrolled for a public administration degree because I just wanted to know how government functions. I met lecturers there who saw my curiosity and therefore mentored me and into becoming a researcher. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And then, Doctor, what are you currently working on? Okay, I'm currently working on a number of things. Um, just finalized a book chapter on equality and service delivery. I'm working on writing two articles for a conference, an international conference that will be held in the Philippines late July. And then I also have publications that are out. I'm just awaiting feedback from the journals. But yeah. And then coming back to service delivery. Mm -hmm. We see, even now, we still see a lot of protest. Mm -hmm. Do we have any mechanism or strategies that we can use to alleviate this poor service delivery? Well, that's the job of the government. <laughs> that, is the, that is the job of the government and Personally, I say they are failing in it. Um, service delivery is deteriorating at a high pace. Um, we're having a lot of government issues, government challenges that are both within the system and others are outside the system. Can we alleviate them? Yes, definitely. Can we work on them? Yes. But we then need a government that is committed to service delivery because I feel personally that one of the greatest challenges that South Africa is facing and which is subsequently resulting in the poor service delivery is that our government is not serious about service delivery. When you look at the Auditor General reports, you look at how municipalities, provincial departments are spending money, you get to realize that there is deliberate non-compliance to legislative frameworks and as a result if there is no compliance to the budget and the budget is not implemented the way it was approved to be then we are going to have service delivery challenges so for me um, the most important thing that we need as South Africans right now is a government that is serious about service delivery after that yeah I think one by one we can tackle the challenges that we have it's not going to be easy but yeah it, it is it is more than doable Thank you for sharing with us. And then it means that if we have a good governance, we will be able to implement the Sustainable Development Goal that talks about uh, sustainable cities and communities. Yes. I, I, I fully agree with that because when government is committed to service delivery, or when government is committed to service delivery, we're going to start then seeing changes and we're going to start seeing improvements. And when those improvements change, that's where you're going to see the sustainable development goals being achieved, some directly and some indirectly, because one way or another, the goals are interlinked. Once the other one starts um, improving, you will see an improvement in the other one. For example, with poverty, once you start looking or once you start decreasing the number of um, or you start increasing household food security, for example, poverty will automatically decrease. So, yeah, it, it all lies in, in the government and service delivery is interlinked. When some one thing works, it's easier for the other things to work as well. So, yeah.
it will lead to sustainability and, and yeah, improvement or enhancement of the country as a whole. Thanks a lot. And then, Doctor, are there any exciting gaps within your field of study? There are a lot with everything that is happening <laughs> with everything that is happening in government. I think it's a field day for people in public administration because at some um, literally everything that's happening in government affects public administration, whether at leadership level, whether at the administration level, whether you want to look at the finances or governance, there is just so much. Um, I specialize in uh, public financial management and there are a lot of gaps why is the economy going down how does that affect people because now with inflation South Africa being rated a junk state and all that it literally affects everything else or it affects the financial management which subsequently will affect service delivery so there is there's just a lot it's a it's a field today for people in public administration we have too many gifts. I think we need more researchers, if I may say so. Good. Uh, can you share with us how public administration is linked to socio-economic development? Okay. Our constitution provides that um, the government must uh, provide basic services to the people. And as a result, the three spheres of the government are then, um, the constitution enshrines that they must, these three spheres of government must implement and improve service delivery and socio-economic development. As a result, it then becomes the fundamental goal or the, the primary goal of the government to improve socio-economic development. And that is indirectly linked to public administration. Because if the government fails to if government fails to provide basic services to the people and People are, we are not able to function or the majority of the people then live under poverty and other socio-economic challenges. The country as a whole then becomes sort of challenged in a way. And the only way to then improve that is by government, especially municipalities, because they are the sphere closest to the people and they are entrusted to serve these basic services, which are your electricity, water, um, sanitation, and, and all that. So if they fail, if public administration, um, if public administrative officials fail in providing these socio-economic services or these services that serve to the socio-economic um, status and development of the country, then the whole country as a whole will begin to fail. When we look at inequality and service delivery, literally we look at the aspects of socio-economic development. And if the country is unable then to develop which is happening in South Africa. If the country is unable to develop socially and economically, then you will see that the entire country will suffer. So it begins at the socio-economic level as a parameter of public administration. And yeah, I, I don't know if I answered you, but yeah, they are linked. Uh, you cannot have the other one without the other. Government officials are entrusted to ensure that the socio-economic parameter of the country is, is stable. Thank you, Doctor. And then, coming to digital governance, mm -hmm. what role can it play in the area of public administration? Okay, um, digital governance, government will allow all citizens to participate in, in government digitally. Um, we are moving in for IR, okay, South Africa is still behind in terms of that, but um, what digital governance will then do is open access to a lot of people. It is a very good concept. I'm fully behind the concept. But reality is South Africa is not really ready for that because there are a lot of inequalities that still exist especially between urban areas and rural areas in South Africa, whereby internet connection and access to digital government is going to be a challenge to people living in rural areas. So we still need infrastructure development, we still need technological advances that are going to help us bridge the gap first of the inequality. But should we then be able to do that in a very successful manner, then I believe um, Digital governance will, will solve a lot of things. Accessibility is everything. And once the people have access to government where they can voice out their grievances and it is much easier then to inquire or get access through government um, by 
through technology, for example, it will then, I, I believe it's something that is going to work towards the enhancement of the country as a whole. Because one of the problems that we have is that people, the reason we still have uh, service delivery inequalities because there are people still left behind. And unless we are all at the same page, there will still will, there will always be those inequalities. So it's a good concept. South Africa, however, still has a long way to go before we can achieve effective digital governance. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, what message can you share with aspiring researchers? Okay, that's a hard question. Um, what I would say is, research is a very complex and dynamic field. Um, it changes constantly, every day. Well, I, I always say, in research, what's new today is old tomorrow. So you need to keep up. And that requires passion, that requires purpose. When coming into the research field, you need to have a purpose to why you are doing research, why you want to be a researcher, because that in the long run is the only thing that's going to sustain you. Um, research is complex in a way that at times it becomes disheartening, you know. Uh, sometimes you do not get what you want or you are unable to get uh, to where you want to go. And if you are impatient or you do not have purpose, you will easily give up. So it's that one thing whereby you need to have purpose to why you are doing it and you need to have passion because, yeah, it's, it's not easy waking up and doing research every day. You need something that will drive you and purpose is very, is a very sustainable driver of, of anything that you want. Thank you for the wise words. And then, Doctor, coming back to citizen participation, engagement, mm -hmm. do, we, do you think that citizens are really engaging to hold the government accountable? Partially. <laughs> Partially. Um, I've had conversations with, for example, people from my township. Um, I've had conversations with um, learners, you know, and most of our people don't even know how to participate in governance. So how can they then be a part of a process they don't even know. So there is, we still need awareness. Um, we still, that's why I talked about access. Access being very important where people can access government. Because at the moment, not everyone knows how to access government. As a result, participation, public participation then becomes a hindrance. The biggest form of public administration, and, uh, of public participation is, is voting. And you know, <laughs> it is that that is the, the that is the most effective one, because that's where your voice is then heard, because whatever you put on that ballot paper will or oh, what we put as South Africans collectively on the ballot paper will result in who governs us, how government then looks. But in terms of other mechanisms, yes, they are there. But I personally believe, someone else can say something, but I personally believe that they are not as effective. And again, um, it goes back to the inequalities. People in townships often feel neglected by government. They often feel that they are not as important. Even when you look at the stats, I was looking at... Um, the GS, GHS um, report the other day, and you would see that water interruptions, electricity interruptions are more common in rural areas and townships than it is in urban areas. Because why? This side, we know our rights. We know how to communicate, you know. Urban people that live in urban areas, people that are educated, depending on your human settlement, where you are based, I would say it participation I would say participation is based more on where you, you, you are based. Um, people that are in urban areas more often have participation because they know the channels through it. But the people in townships, rural areas, their only way of public participation or getting the government to notice them is through protests. And that is why there are so many protests, because they feel that's the only way that government gets to hear their grievances but they don't know that there are other channels that they could follow for that. I don't know if I'm making sense. <laughs> no, you're making sense. Okay. Yeah. And then this comes back to our, our students. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, the one of the attributes for a graduated UFS is citizen engaged. So our students must go out there and advocate in their communities. True. I I agree. I always tell my students, because I'm in public administration and in finance, I always tell them that, guys, you don't watch a country. When you go out there and you find a job, you must be the change that you want to see. You know, you must bring the change that you want to see. And you don't have to be in government to bring that change. You can go and educate other people within your area, you know, your township, wherever you live and say, okay, maybe we should actually do this. There is a channel in which we can get government to listen to us. So I advocate for that. I always tell my students that um, sitting and waiting for things to change is, is, is literally a waste of time. You need to be the change. You need to bring the change and go out there and do something that will bring about that change you desire. Thank you so much. And then, Doctor, apart from research, mm-hmm. what are your other interests? Hey, you see, I told you, research is a complex thing. So I'm forever busy with the research. I don't have time for <laughs> I hardly have time for everything else outside the lecturing and research, but um, I love cooking. I don't know if I love cooking or I love eating, so then I'm forced to cook <laughs> and try out new things. Um, also, I'm a lover of sports, um, keeping healthy. Um, I'm getting my daughter into that. So yeah, I think uh, hob- cooking I'd, I'd, I'd categorize as a hobby, um, sports as well and then i'm trying now to get into this healthy lifestyle i don't know if it's gonna work <laughs> because the type of food i want is not the healthy type is the junk and <laughs> the fatty sides of it but yeah other than that then i just spend my time really on myself my mental health as well i preach a lot about mental health so i ensure that in everything that i do i am mentally strong um, whenever I feel exhausted, I do whatever. I have to go to therapy, take a run, whatsoever. But the yeah, mental health is is a very important aspect of of my life and the people around me. I try to make that a like a lifestyle, a habit, something that is a priority. Thank you so much. Yes, mental health is a priority. It is because if you are, you know, with the suicide rates. And there's this meme on social media that we are um, we are a generation with happy pictures, uh, but a depressed generation with happy pictures. And that is so true. Um, you find a lot of people that are going through a lot of issues where they are way to a point where they are depressed and commit suicide and and all that. And I'm an advocate of saying. Whatever, if you need time out, stop everything, even your work. Stop your work, stop everything, take time for for your mental health. Because once that is messed up, you are messed up as a person and you will not be able to function until that is filled up. So in trying to fill other people's cups, make sure your cup is forever filled and forever overflowing. Thank you so much, Doctor, for sharing with us. <laughs> we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for the opportunity and for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you.